Welcome to Breathing with Beerman. I'm here with co-host. The who? The who? The who? Beerman. What? Beerman. It's his own name. <laughs> anyway. Good. Call me Adam G. I'm here with the co-host. Now, for the small little world of public access TV in Princeton, we set a record. We had over 1,200 hits, which compared maybe to Justin Bieber might not be a lot, but usually shows here get 300 hits on Vimeo and other social media. With the help of Lauren Lepre and Jody Wood, we hit over 1,200. We have a fan club in, in, in France now, and we're not even Jerry Lewis <laughs> and everything. <laughs> and I'm supposed to thank Lauren and Jody, and I should, but at the end, it's all about me. It is, let's face it. Really? Me. No. Yes, I'm the orchestra. I have to orchestrate this. You I am, are. I'm, you know, the stars come and everything. Yeah, right. You put your time in. Yeah, so. Yeah. Or maybe the upgrade help. I don't yeah, know. I don't right? know. The <laughs> upgrade help. Is that to do with Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, being yeah. on the show? Robert maybe? Downey, and then, and then yeah, we had the Comic Con, Con. Yeah. Hagen and Comic Con. Lo Lo Lauren had that, that original idea get people who have followings. So, if any of you have non followings and not that interesting, don't even ask me to come on the show. <laughs> Again, we're not here to help you with your soul, your karma, like other shows on Princeton TV, they do deal with past lives. Oh, right? really? We're not here to help, you know, yeah. And in fact, I want you to have bad past lives. Only a good life and a good following, and you can come on the show. Comments, but bad questions? past lives would be kind of funny, though. If I could make some of the other sh people who have shows disappear and not even have shows here anymore, it'd be better, I think, yeah. actually. Yeah. Start running an empire. Yeah, yeah exactly, and be yeah. ruthless. I want to be mean and but. ruthless and, and, you know, I think the show has really good potential here. I think, I think Jody's a, a good update, upgrade as well. And uh, I plan to bring some of the best guests that I know through my network. Which you already have. Which I have so far. But, you know, I can keep Adam on the, the right track here, you know. And, they see uh, take, something. Take it me. seriously. Everything I do. I take seriously. You kind of have a man crush on me, too. Mm, no. No, I didn't say that. That's <laughs> just something Adam That's thinks. definitely it's something okay. going on in his head. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, he's one of the most fucked up people you'll ever meet. You yeah. thought I was bipolar the other day. Oh, I said bisexual. Oh, no. I like old men and young boys. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, so, Lauren, what are you going to do for me next month? Are you, are you working on anything? Uh, anything? I have a couple of things. Uh, in my, see, I, I have someone locked in, but if I say their name right now, they don't show up. I dig They're the, getting free publicity. I, but dig I, I dig the tease. I dig the tease. But uh, I got some the the things on deck. The tease. He's teasing yeah. for oh, the next show. I have some people on deck with, uh, that I think deserve some good time on this. Uh, I think this is a great set here. A lot of people are just doing shows like this out of their basement. You can tell this is a nice set here. Adam's uh, been doing this a long time, and I believe he's myself. been doing a lot of things in the basement. Yeah. basement <laughs> like that. Yes. Yeah, ask my parents. But I, I stop that, you'll go blind. Right? Yeah, or the smell of marijuana. I'm just <laughs> I, I agreed to do the show because I, I I like you, Adam, and I think uh, this this Princeton. I mean, it's Princeton, and top it off. I just think the show has a lot of growth. Has a lot of room to grow. Absolutely. And I'm going to help do my part. With you should that. have grabbed me I earlier agree. in your, one of your wrestling holds and said, Adam, this is what you should do. But you didn't do that. Well, it took, I guess, to a blow up to, for that to <laughs> the right moment to jump in. But, That's uh, true. That's yes. true. Yes. Uh, we have 30 seconds. So, anyway, we have Todd Parker, uh, been on the show three times, friend of the show. Uh, he'll tell you about his new business. It's all over the world. We're going to have improv again. Uh, Robert Downey Jr. should be here. Some people ask, is it the real Robert Downey? Hmm. That's for you to and, guess. And everything else. So and Roby Wood from Improv Agility. Oh, I just forgot about your brother. He's such an asshole. Thank you. <laughs> Bendejo in Spanish. Yeah. So uh -huh. we're, we're going to be seeing you, and stay tuned for the next segment. For the third time, Todd Parker, uh, who has a new business. Can you pronounce the name of this business? It's Gomocho. Gomocho. Uh, Todd is a friend of the show. He calls up, says he wants to come on the show. He says, I'll promote your show. I go, oh. That's when I have to say yes. But anyway, Todd, third time mm -hmm. on. Uh, let's start off with the basics. Um, what does Gomocho mean and what does Gomocho do? Sure. So uh, Gomocho is a combination of three words, go, mobile, and change. Uh, they are an offshoot of a, uh, a company out of the Netherlands called uh, Tenzing Global. Oh. And basically what they do is uh, uh, they have developed uh, an app. Uh, and this is an app for, uh, for field management. Uh, basically, uh, anybody in HVAC, uh, electrical, plumbing, small to mid-sized businesses, some large businesses, uh, when they, people that have to deal with work orders. Uh, so you have people that go out in the field and they have all these work orders and they can get lost, they can get crumpled, you know, nobody knows where they are. Well, we, we put an app on somebody's phone and you can log right in, you can see uh, 
where they're going to be. You can see what, what skill sets they need to have. Uh, do you need somebody that's an electrician? Do you need somebody that's a plumber? Do they have to have a certain widget in their car? Uh, where, where are the cars? So we have all of that uh, technology, all of that capability that's at, uh, at the push of a button. Really. Information, uh. so information, faster, more efficient, for you and the business person. And, Absolutely. And no mistakes. No one can say they don't know, don't have. There's no billing own. issues. You, you, can't, you can't dispute something that's electronic. Uh, there's no purchasing of expensive equipment. You don't have to buy these massive servers. Everything is cloud-based. It's a very, very simple, streamlined process. And things Jesus. can't get lost. Um, what is wrong with using paper for uh, daily ordering, tracking, and billing. What, what, I mean, some people still want to go old fashioned. Sure, sure. So, I mean, I, I, apart from uh, apart from the obvious thing, which is that the paper can get lost, you you have a lot of the techs out in the field, and the, and they they will handwrite things, obviously, because they don't walk around with laptops. Right. So you have handwriting that gets smudged. You have uh, hours that may or may not be a hundred percent accurate. Uh, so there's right. there's issues about billing. Well, did they work five hours? Is that a five? Is that an eight? I'm not quite sure. Uh, did they did they take a lunch break and, right. and they build the customer for the lunch? So all of those sort of uh, the old uh, fashioned paddings out the window. The variables of, of human error, really. And the details of the job. And, and the details kind of, of the job. Here here they 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 open up the app. They push start. They show up at the location. They push end when they leave. And that's basically wow. it. So From a business standpoint, it's great. But the old fashioned thing, we can add an extra hour. We don't have to worry worry about you know yeah, lunch. Exactly. I'm hungover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want another Bloody Mary. Right. That's so, out the window. So how, so how are you going to build the customer if you don't yeah. know how many hours they were there? Um, but well, you want some scumbags coming in, you know. Taking well, care that of. can happen, though. That's a true. Yeah, can you trust these people, right, these service people, relying on right. them to do the job? In well, you can now. now. Yeah, absolutely. What's that logo mean? So that's that? uh, FMP360. That's the name of the app, and that's a, a Field Management Portal 360. Uh, and that's something that it, it's it's put on a phone. It's uh, it will run on any platform. It'll run on an iOS. It'll run on an uh, iPhone. It'll run on an Android. It'll run on Windows 10. Big Brother's there, but efficiency, yep. bottom line, is is really respected in terms of money. I mean, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Are you new? I mean, how many other people are doing this? Are you guys new? So in the there, there are there are a few companies that are doing this. The the difference that sort of the advantage that we have over them is one is uh, time to market. Basically. From the point that somebody comes to me and, and says, hey, Todd, you know, this is a fantastic app. How long does it take? My answer is five weeks. Five weeks, you can be up and running. You have an environment. You have all of your customers. You have all of your assets. You have all of your users. They're up and running in five weeks. And, and you make it hassle-free? You, you hold their hand? You take it through the process? Absolutely, yeah. there's problems going over to digital, right? What are these problems, though? Well, some of, some of the issues, of course, uh, uh, would would be the data. I mean, if you're if you're talking large large amounts, like we have we have large customers. One of our biggest customers is Heineken. Now Heineken is global, um, and and they have a large amounts of data. And sometimes a lot of the other companies they can't handle those large amounts of data. Uh, well, we have a very streamlined process, um, a, a very strong skill set uh, in handling uh, the data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have people who help troubleshoot, explain what's going we have, on. We have a whole uh, whole resource team, uh, both uh, on the west coast of the U.S. and also uh, offshore as well. But what do we, what do us, the viewers, who they could be need to do to get that benefit of um, Go Matcha? So, so we actually are, are offering a, a special promotion right now. If if somebody contacts us and they and they and they uh, say the word Princeton, uh, now typically the way that this works, it's a, it's a it's a monthly uh, cost. It's a it's a per user per month cost. So uh, anybody who contacts us, uh, who sees us on this show, and, and, and says the keyword Princeton, we're going to give them the first month for free. So wow. basically, already you're getting you're getting one month out of uh, out of twelve, absolutely free, no cost. Mm -hmm. And who would contact you? A contractor, a plumber? So it, so it could oh, be uh, is... it could be companies. Uh, it could be a, a, a five person uh, contractor who's got a, they've got an electrician and a plumber and uh, and, a, and a handyman. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be large companies. You know, it could be somebody like uh, uh, Bristol Myers Squibb or, or somebody like that who they have people that have to go out and do inspections or they have to do uh, adjustments or anything anybody who has and and the, or transportation companies you know li limo drivers taxi drivers anybody who has people going out in the field yeah, on you gotta basis. unfortunately you have to trust people and some people might not be trustworthy yeah. <laughs> right right and, and too i mean it takes a lot of that worry that your, your livelihood is in the hands of subcontracted yeah. people I mean, you, and the nice thing is you know you're on a, you're on a smartphone you've got a built-in camera if you need any evidence at all boom Snap a picture. Yeah. There's your evidence. You need to take a picture of it. how many miles did you drive? Oh, let me take a picture of my odometer. Uh, was that it's really to be a crook these days? Yeah. I know. I was thinking that though too. Take yeah, yeah. You really got to be on task though. Sure, right. sure. Was that really broken? Here, let me take a picture of it. 
What would Heineken use it for? Like? So Heineken actually, they, they uh, obviously everybody knows what Heineken uh, does. Right. Uh, and every once in a while, the tubes going to the taps uh, need to be inspected because they, they back up with bacteria and things like that. So it becomes an FDA issue. So they have people that go out and they actually inspect the tubes to make sure that there's an, an appropriate amount of bacteria in the tube. And that's important not to so mess up. So they have their work order. So they have the work order. Right. Here's, here's, the, here's the, the uh, specification. Here's the location. I mean, they go, they go global. Right. And, they, wow. and, they, and they go around and they, this, is how, this is what it looks like. This is how much time I spent there. Wow. Yeah. Are you guys going public anytime soon? <laughs> I don't did, think so. No. Oh, no. Did you come up with this idea? Or is it no, of... this is a company that's actually, uh, Tenzing, uh, which is the company based out of the Netherlands, has been in business for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. And then, and then Gomocha uh, recently has, uh, uh, has sort of spun off of, of Tenzing. But mm -hmm. uh, we, have, we have an office in Los Angeles. We've got an office in Washington, D.C., where I work two days a week. Uh, three days a week, I'm here in Princeton. Jeez. So oh. this is your company? No, no. This is a, this no, is a no. company. I've, I've oh. been with this company for about six months. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, can viewers uh, team up with construction partners in terms Absolutely. of... Absolutely. And, and we, really, we, we strongly promote uh, partnership. So if you've got a small company that's a, that's a five-person company and you're saying, oh, this is really not going to be cost-effective yes, for I was me. Thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I, so you're an electrician and, and, you, uh, and you say, hey, you know, I've got this buddy who's a, who's a plumber and maybe the two of us could, uh, could, could jointly use this app. Absolutely. And we, and we, right. we and definitely... Share the can, they share the cost. They share the cost. They share the, that's uh, all the benefits. That's how it becomes cost-effective cost huh. and everything. Absolutely. You wow. could use that with your acting, because you're all over the place with your... If you start, you sure. know, the Jody Wood acting school and you have to train other people and everything for your and stuff. Yeah, that, yeah. well, that'll be more with the... But actors, are weird pe but actors are weird people, too. And, and, well, teachers, what do you say? No, but you would want accountability because you can't control the quality. Absolutely. You right. would train them, but they might not be you. And you want... They're it's not. Your name, it's, yeah, they're right. not. It's your name on the... But still, your That's name right. on the company. Well, and you've got, you've got GPS capabilities here. So if somebody's yeah, ready. So your you call time is 5.30 and you're not here. Where are they? Oh, well, yeah, they're, they're 45 minutes away. They're obviously never going to make... They're fired. They're out of here. Yeah, right, right. You're a jerk. I can't trust you. It's over. Right. You know, I can't... Wow. Yeah. Because I remember when McDonald's started, I saw the movie The Founder, but one reason the McDonald brothers, since back in the 40s, they tried to start franchising, but they could control the quality and mm -hmm. what was going on in their name. And yeah, you could yeah. see, and they really took it personally. Because, because they wanted to do everything old school. They, right, didn't, they right. didn't want to sort of uh, embrace the new technology. Right, 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 right. Even so. then? Not in the 40s. Not in the 40s. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, but, but yeah. But that's, that's, I mean. that's integrity. You integrity, know? I mean, that's yeah. what you, your name's on the door, you yeah. know. Yeah, but sure. Ray Kroc, he did it the old fashioned. He sent people, but before tech, he sent people would would do Make sure spot, they were... yeah, spot visits and everything. Yeah, yeah, and, and everything. So, uh, what wow. is it? I mean, you're you're growing. What, what do you hope to be in five years? What do you think is going to be going? So, on? Uh, the idea is that we're going to be opening several offices all, all across the country. So we've got we've got the main cities covered. I mentioned Washington D.C. I mentioned Los Angeles. The idea is in five years we're going to have an office in Chicago. We're going to have an office in Boston. Uh, we're going to have an office uh, Orlando. So basically, we will be able to essentially service every uh, all 24 uh, time zones simultaneously. Wow. wow. You're going to be a conglomerate. You're going to be, you're yeah. going to be a busy man. It'll be very, very busy, yeah. What are you doing specifically right now? Are you in sales? I mean, we So I'm, I'm in business development. So I, I work with a lot of the new acquisitions, um, customers that, that are interested in uh, learning more about it. You know, people can contact me. Uh, I, I'm basically available uh, 16 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yeah. Don't get married too soon then. Right. right. Um, <laughs> but I, I love your. I thought we had another graphic coming on too. I love the graphic though. That's just like if Superman was a flasher. Right. Anyway, <laughs> let's move on, folks. But this is the future then, and and so um, where do you get the IT people from all over? I mean, um, so a lot of a lot of our uh, staff are, are highly trained. They they have engineering backgrounds. They have technology backgrounds. They have construction backgrounds. So we a lot of our staff will come from the construction industry. So they, so they really they have a working know that knowledge. Particular industry. They right have a working knowledge to... of the industry. Our, our two biggest industries right now: construction and, and, and public works. Right. Huh. So water companies, uh, gas and electric. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. If you could do the, the mom and pop businesses, that would help though too. And we have them, right. and we have we have a number of clients who are there's small you know they've got five they've got five guys and five guys and five trucks and, and that's pretty much it mm -hmm. that's, and that's all you need so you, you go at any level we go doesn't from, matter. we go from a five person uh, up to Heineken right yeah. right so if you see the next so if you see this show since we're so we're international now and have a fan club in France French too you take the French too you, sure, sure yeah um how do they contact you I think it's you're you're, you're uh, through, the we, through the website they can get me or or by email tparker at gamocha.com uh, just reach out. Let me know. Uh, 
uh, the keyword Princeton, and, and we'll work out a deal. If you want to talk about a partnership, we'll, we can link you up with other other possible partners. Oh, so there's a lot of people like you all all, all over the world, basically, who, and you do that personal one-on-one -on -one relationship. Absolutely. You sit down and, and you see if they're ready for it. You tell them what the business is like. Sure. You tell them what the expense you get. And we'll, it we'll even create a we'll even create a, a trial environment for them. Give, give us your give us your, your data. Give us your assets and your users. We'll build the environment absolutely free see of how, cost. See you how you play like with it. it for for a month. Right. So it's like a baby. You give them the baby. If it works well, you hold on to it. But I like that too, though. There's no, not a lot of pressure. There's not. It's, sure. it's kind of a win-win, though. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I like about it. Yeah. So you guys have integrity. You ha you have money. You have a background. You know. You know. You know. Of course, you want people to buy and get into it, but they can get into it risk-free, basically. Absolutely. In a yeah. sense. Oh, How would you like having a baby? Well, that well, Jody. Since you're an actor, maybe you're not into the finite information. <laughs> no, um, no, but that was the oldest selling thing in the world. Not saying in a cynical way. You have someone hold a baby. Like you give them a product, play with it, see how you like mm -hmm. it. Someone's like, yeah. when people get babies, they fall in love with a baby or a puppy dog. They don't give it back. Yeah. If this works out for you, just you can't give it back. Right. It works. It, it works, yeah. Selling babies? Kind of. Seriously? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, we got to that. All right. All right. Okay, we're going to have a minute. Uh, please give us your vital information again and mention that keyword, say Princeton, you get the first month for free. What's, what's that all again? Say it three times. What, say it one more time. It's been the third time. <laughs> uh, it's uh, gomocha.com is gomocha the website. T Parker at gomocha.com is the email. Princeton is the magic word. All right, you can say it. So in the next month, I want to hear people um, call Todd, mention Princeton, and show that we actually have good demographics and people will call in too. But I'm excited. And I hope this you, is very exciting. It is Good exciting. And I hope you come back awesome. again. Sure, sure. And, of course, promote this show. Absolutely. Todd Parker, GoMocha.com. Stay Princeton. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Back with Robert Downey, Jr. Uh, we've entered a more serious phase in our questions with Robert Downey, Jr. Iron Man 3 has been a great success and everything. And we'll, not, we'll do the 10 questions not first. But um, yeah. maybe you don't want to get into this right now. But... Um, you once said Iron Man's become a better person, and you said you've become a better person. And my question is, you said that you can't go from a $2,000 penthouse to jail and come out a liberal. What did you mean by oh, you that? We were talking about Iron Man, no? Yeah, but um, we just did, and just I, right I thought, I saw it, you know. Well, you know, that, that's the funny thing about what you say. You know, you, you can change your opinion. And when I was saying that, I think it was to a reporter, and, and that just happened to be my opinion at the time. And, and you know, that's the funny thing about it. You know, you can, opinions can change. You know, I, I couldn't even tell you what the word liberal means. So, you oh. know, therein lies your answer. Well, I know you're here to promote a movie. Don't get me wrong. I, and again, if you don't want to talk about this, we just, you know, maybe we talked briefly on Iron Man and, and how the characters develop and you've had Look, three um, movies. Look, you, you, you better just, your foot's starting to jump. You better move on to your next <laughs> question. Oh, uh, seriously, come on. Oh, okay. Um, but you know, again, I see parallels though. I know you've had dark periods in your life where, um, um, where, um, you know, with your relationship with your father, drinks and drugs and everything. Are you a better person now though? Like Iron Man, are you, you know, have you evolved into the, your own hero? Somewhere? Sure, I, I, I guess so. Yeah. When you're working with directors, how do you like to be directed? How, what is your approach? It's so weird. It it I think it almost feels like like high school, you know. In, in a way, I'm I'm almost um, I'm comfortable if I feel like I can run roughshod over somebody, yeah. or I'm comfortable if I feel like they're in my face, but I I really know that they know what they're talking about, you know. But but really, the the middle space is where all the great stuff happens. You know, you don't know what's going to happen when you show up somewhere. Yeah. And, and I'm not the type of person, you know, with, with, with rare exceptions that, you know, to me, the more and more I work on something, the better and better it gets. I tend to like to let things kind of uh, percolate mm -hmm. in what would externally seem like an extremely lazy, evasive fashion. And then I like to come in and, and uh, ninja it with not too, ma too many meatballs, you know, but um, you, amazing. you're not already, you know. But my question is, um, you know, the first Iron Man, you couldn't even be insured. How did that make you feel then because of that dog past and, you know. Well, it's funny, you know, if you had asked me years ago after the first Iron Man, um, you know, as far as I was concerned, that was real. You know, that was, that was me. Um, A liberal. You know, no. 
as far as I'm concerned, mm -hmm. I was Tony Stark. Um, and, and I don't mean to be, I don't mean to sound like I was so delusional that I thought I was actually Tony Stark. I just mean that I kind of felt that we had the same persona. But, you know, I've, 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 I've come to realize that, you know, nobody is their persona. And, um, and also, you know, as far as Iron Man goes, I think <clears throat> when, when you have the most writing on it, you know, when you have the most to lose, um, um, you, you can't afford to just cross your eyes. You have to make the most radical departure from just crossing your eyes and, and dotting your T's. And y you need that, that special sauce. And I'm not saying that I'm not that special sauce, um, but I do know, I do know, uh, I don't know when we're getting close. Hmm. You know, you're one of the most amazing human beings I've ever met oh. in my life, and you're one of the most amazing actors that we've ever been blessed to have. Please, in the cinema, you know, I'm Robert. It's, it's how uh, I feel. You know, I, uh, you really don't need to to say that. Uh, well, I, I just for my I, heart. I, I'm not trying to kiss your ass. It's just I, it's my heart. But what about the drugs? Uh, well, hold on a second. But, I, and I, um, I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, when people come to work with you, are they younger actors? Uh, you know, you've been around the block. You've been there. You, you're the man. You've done several movies. You know, when, when you're working with younger actors, how does that? I find that, that nobody else cares because, like me, they're primarily thinking about themselves. It, so if if somebody has not made space for themselves yet, there there's no way they can make space for anybody else. Now I, I appreciate certain platitudes or any of that stuff, but there's also nothing I hate more than when some like little nine year old kid comes up and says, "You don't really even know what you're doing, do you?" And I go, <laughs> "No, never have." Now <laughs> why don't we start the scene yeah, over here and instead of way, looking away from the camera, look right here next to the mat box and I'm going to stand off camera and going to give you three funny things to say and you're going to repeat them three times in a row. You're not All using right. now though, are you? Why don't I'm we sorry, 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 sorry. do that? Okay, I'm sorry. I just... Listen, you, I don't know what kind of deep dark agenda you got here, but uh, just because I sit here doesn't mean that uh, you have a button that you can press, you know, to scrutinize me as if I'm some sort of, uh, you know, um, kitty fiddler running for mayor. I'm, I'm not trying anything. Good. We have, we have some time. You said I have some time to talk to you, and I thought relate like, to your. You know, why don't we go to the ten questions and see uh, what, how that goes? Okay. Um. Should I, do you want to start, Robert? This is kind of from the inside the actor studio type stuff, but um, we just want to what just off the cuff. What is your favorite word? My favorite word, I guess you mean the, the meaning, a uh, favorite word. Just, just a favorite word. Well, Piccadilly is a great word, That's but great you know, um, I also, my favorite word in terms of meaning is play. You know, I just think that so much of suffering is caused because people um, take too seriously what the gods created for play. And so I, I just like to invest anything I do with, you know, a sense of play. Um, what is your... Least favorite word, Robert. That is one of the stupidest questions I've ever it heard. It really and is. It really is. If you ask me another stupid question like that, I swear I will tear this joint apart. I, I'm just. I, I'm just trying to do an interview. You're promoting a movie, and listen, I thought nobody cares about your I, deep, I dark I'm not to agenda here. I, I didn't think I was being offensive. Can we move on to the next question? Yes. Um, <sighs> what turns you on, creatively, spiritually, emotionally? Um, <clears throat> you know, it, it's so funny. My, my bloodline has been so outside the establishment <clears throat> for the past 50 years that there's just something that feels really kind of dirty and great about being a family man now, mm, you know, mm, so mm. I don't know. I, I just really like it. Okay, then what, what turns you off, Robert? Um, toxic people, you know, people like, you know, someone you might know um, personally well. Uh, people that uh, think their process is more important than the overall process. I'm you just know? trying to get the that is person. how that is how you create enemies with cosmic justice because you will be you will be humiliated. I, I thought maybe losing your smack down the toilet. What, but anyway. what is your favorite curse word? <laughs> 
I, I really try not to curse anymore because um, it, it uh, you know, I'm a Disney man, a family <laughs> man now, yeah, and, yeah. you know, I work for Disney, Marvel, you know, yeah, owns yeah, Disney. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, I just, you know, I just don't like it, uh, you know, except, you know, sometimes it, it, with um, my agent, you know, I need to kind of lay down the law there. But when I'm around kids and stuff, you know, they're, they're, I, I, lo I just love it when the words kids these days comes out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> what? No, you're getting older. You're only about a minute or two, but we're yeah, going to pass on. You don't mind if you don't mind, Robert. Oh, what sound and noise do you love, Robert Downey Jr.? <clears throat> What's his name? <clears throat> um, you know, sure. if at the age of 52 now, I, you know, if you had asked me a few years ago, I, I would have said, you know, I love the sound of my kids laughing or my wife laughing, but. Now I think I, I love the sound of my back cracking, you know, in, in certain yoga poses, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> what, um, what sound do you hate? Well, you know, given that I just told you what sound I love, then uh, the, the sound of my back cracking, the, the sound I hate is obviously the sound of my back not cracking. Mm -hmm. And the final minute. Oh. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? I, I always wanted to be a singer, you know. Um, while I, I can't dance, um, I can sing, you know. And so dancing just meant don't fall down when you're doing it. But, you know, I, I actually sang for Sting, you know, one time. And Sting and I are really good friends. You know, really? Tr Trudy, his wife, just brought over some cookies yesterday. Oh, how nice. Yeah, and we're really good friends. And he, he sang once, and I sang in his concert once. I don't know if you saw that, mm -mm. but I was oh. amazing. Oh, I was just you amazing. Are. You are amazing. But you know? what about if another dog period does come? I don't want to go back to your past, but you're... You know, things. What, what is with you in your deep agenda, dark agenda? You I know? don't see an agenda. I, I don't. Just be, like I said, I'm not a kitty fiddler that you can just sit here and, and ask questions. You I'm, know? I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I can't. and you know, by the way, I don't really have a problem with drugs. I have a problem with addiction. There's a difference. I don't think anybody really cares if you start drugs as long as you don't kill yourself. As long as you don't, you know. <sighs> As long as you're able to stop it. Yeah. Well, you know, well, so. well, speaking of stopping, we're going to have to stop. Now. I hope you'll come back. I don't know if you want to talk yeah, to Yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe. Are you going to be here? I'll do the interview. Oh, okay, okay, fine. Um, well, that's been Robert Downey Jr., uh, kind of a contentious interview, and we'll learn more about Iron Man and his past, <laughs> maybe, in the future. <laughs> Thank you. Back with Breathing with Beerman, the ultimate show with the ultimate guest. We have a Wood family reunion. You're into something, Roby Wood. Correct. Is that some yeah. kind of like Irish Gaelic name or something? That's that's a mid my middle name, so it's a family name uh, mm -hmm. inherited from my well, great grandfather. Yeah. I have no idea. I think it was somebody's last name back in the day. Well, Tom so. goes fast, fast for having fun. You're doing something very interesting. I wish you would start a company and I'd buy into it because you're doing <laughs> some improv with corporations, right? And you're looking at improving agility. What what what, what is the premise behind this besides having fun? Well. Um, Improv agility is something that uh, Jody and I put together. Um, he's been doing improvisation work for a long time, and uh, I found out that he was actually doing some of this with businesses. Well, I work with uh, software development teams in developing software products. Right now I'm with Capital One Bank, uh, which is a very interesting experience that I could tell you about. And Capital uh, One, with the commercials we see yes, all the time. Yes, yeah. Uh, what's in yes, your sir, wallet? Jackson. Jennifer Gardner. <laughs> yes. yes. The ex Miss uh, Ben Affleck, yes, but right. into her personal life. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so we're um, uh, basically working with software development teams. Uh, they are looking for uh, teams that can actually perform in this new kind of world we're in. We're in a new economy. It's, uh, some people call it a new economy, some people call it the creative economy. Uh, what does so, that mean, though, in, in 100 words or less, in creative economy? Everything has to be done with IT, make your own business. Work yeah, it's, 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 uh, information moves around the world so fast now. Uh, human knowledge is increasing at an exponential rate. Uh, disruption is happening in every industry. Um, so now we're in a world where the customers are in control. Uh, businesses really need to please customers if they want to stay in business. And, and businesses some, that have been in business for a long time are... You can see them going out of business. Uh, you know, 
Uber is taking, putting the cab industry out of business and so forth. Wireless cars could put truckers around. Yeah. yeah. Not, not, uh, so what does yeah, improv do? I mean, I love improv, but how is that going to rewire people's brains and they're going to be nicer to customers? I mean, what, what well, the, yeah, well, the people that work in this environment, they really are creative types. So even though where I work with software engineers uh, initially, uh, they really have to be creative to uh, innovate and, and build great products and they have to be able to do it really fast. So they're... Uh, they're, they're facing constant change. So what, what we tried to do is put a program together that says, well, what does it mean to be agile? People talk about doing And you're a scrum master? You come in as the scrum master? The scrum master, it yeah. It sounds like I, some I, kind of something in a Petri dish. What yeah, is it? pretty much. I th it comes from... Uh, you were growing up, I, call, I thought it was a scrum bag. Right? Yeah, yeah, scrum, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's from or, scrum. It, it sounds so. like you're sexually harassing someone. <laughs> yeah. <I> mean, I, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's a servant leader. So the scrum master what, so is, instead of a project manager now, we have scrum masters. And they're, they're servant leaders that work with teams. Servant leaders. Servant leaders. So the servant is the leader. Yes, so it's, kind of it's, like leader, it's, leader, it's leader as servant, so okay. uh, because the, the teams you want to self-organize. So you want people to kind of figure it out themselves because that's where we kind of generate that creativity. And then what do we have to do? How do we serve the customer? How do we make this new IT? Yeah. Who's going to be in control of that? How much time do you need? But, yeah, maybe. instead of the project manager, you have the servant leader who's trying to get these people to self-organize and really get creative and get mm -hmm. focused and, and to, uh, to deal with change. And... Yes, that's what our, our improv agility does is we, we actually we put together uh, exercises from improvisational theater that help build on the kind of skills that people need to build, you know, real personal skills for collaborating, communicating, uh, being able to be lifelong learners, um, the ability to make decisions when you don't have all the information you need. Uh, at your disposal. So uh, you and Jody come in, and we uh, we do improv like you know you know follow yes and and everything like well, that. Well, it starts with the yes yeah. and mindset, right. that exercise, and then it, you know builds into various depending on how long the workshop is. Right. But building into yeah. Um, yeah it's, but for it to work, they have to keep after you're gone, they have to keep on doing it. Then. Right. Yeah, and and it's and it's something you have to revisit. It's like training. It's like trying to build mm -hmm. uh, build muscle memory. Um, the, uh, you know, we, Jody said it starts with yes end, and, that, and that's kind of the basis of, I guess, all of improv, yes, right? Definitely, it's, uh, definitely. we're going to take what somebody else on our team gives us, and, and we're going to try on. and build on it. So Whether you love the idea or not, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. you know, and you know. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of the essence of collaboration, and that's the first part of, uh, of being agile and, and becoming a servant leader as well. Do you have testimonials? So, I mean, this is like a new company, like the economy, the world's changing, this is like a new kind of business taking... Improv, which some people thought, hey, it's fun, it's creative. Yeah. And it scares the hell out of them as well. Of course. Like, oh, my God, I can't do this. And I, you know, In front I've of my had, peers. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't want to be silly. And we squash that right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. And I've had people say, oh, I didn't know what to expect. I love this. You know, I was scared to death, blah, blah, blah. And, and I, I, now I'm thinking to myself, what else do I think I can't do? Right. So I, I that's the testimonials yeah. you get oh back. I mean, have you exactly. revisited it? And yeah, and, and we find the, all the time in different contexts, you can kind of, Throw it in there. For example, I was uh, working with a group in Capital One Bank uh, last week, and we had to, somebody said, "Well, can you lead us in a retrospective? We want to talk What's about retrospective. Well, retrospective Scrum master. Is, we want to we want to look Watch at <laughs> we want to look at uh, kind of we we had a program for the last quarter, and we did things a certain way. We want to kind of revisit that. What what did we do well? What did we do so well? Oh, that's how you. Implement what can we improve? It. So. Right. But you have uh, to have a lot of honesty and openness. Yeah, that, and that's what happens. That's what improv right. is, right? Yeah, but I, mean, I thought you get a lot of egos and dictators. I mean, how do you overcome it, that? Yeah, well, that's a lot of the principles of uh, improvisation from improvisational theater really influence he, that. The idea they say of, check your ego at the door without yeah. saying it. Right. That's what improv is about. They have to and, be egalitarian. Don't try and uh, yeah. don't try and do it well. Don't try and be the star. Don't it's try. All just about. be. Yes. Right. I mean, so. it sounds liberating, but. <clears throat> like you said, it sounds it's groundbreaking, but like any new technology or a new way of training people, I can see there'd be resistance. So, but how, how's your company growing? I mean, I know Jody goes up in California, Las Vegas. I mean, people want this. It, it <laughs> seems to be working. Yeah, I mean, we're master. actually our our our, our <laughs> brand. <like> that. <laughs> I still want to know exactly why it's Scrum great. Master. I, I, if, anyway. you, if you ask me, if you would ask me twenty years ago what I'd be doing, oh, the Scrum and rugby. Yes, yeah, Scrum and rugby. Hey. Yes, it comes okay, from rugby. That's, that's the idea. Right. Yeah. So um, I thought you were smart. <laughs> <laughs> I'm smart. Did you go to school, stupid? <laughs> what are the friends? Yeah, say? I'm, smart. Way. I'm smart. I know. Let's do them smart. That much respect. Well, in our brand, actually, we're uh, 
We're connected. We're actually, you talk about the Netherlands. You had a, a guest on earlier. Um, he, uh, we, we, we're work, working with a worldwide network called Happy Melly, which is so we're, it sounds like a happy ending. Actually, no, well, our improv agility is. Right uh, sorry, sorry, I'm right, improving right there. Our improv agility band is uh, improv brand, agility brand right. is uh, is really a Happy Melly brand. So it's an international network of of people that are committed to bringing happiness to work. And, are are uh, you the only well, person like, doing uh, this? I'm no, the, with uh, Happy Melly is run by Jurgen Apollo. Right? Yeah, Jurgen he, yeah. he is. Uh, he's Apollo, written, written, mm -hmm. written the book uh, Management 3.0, and uh, he uh, had to change the world. So you're on the cutting edge. Books, of, so. But you yeah. think you yeah. guys are on the cutting edge of something and retraining, it's rebranding? It's all about keeping people engaged and, and, and you know they, they want to go to work and they're and, happy yeah. there. And, and you work with big companies, small companies, little, little um, pro project managers, big project managers. Yeah, and we're doing uh, our own workshops and uh, and, and getting Princeton people TV from. Princeton TV needs this. Uh, <laughs> no, well, that'd be great. <laughs> two yeah, minutes. Yeah. Uh, we have really have to improv now. Two minutes. Have you, have you got your message out? You have two minutes. What do you want to say? What do you want people to know about you? How can they reach you? Um, um, would you fire your own brother if you had to? He already has. Yeah, oh, no, okay. geez, I try, but yeah. <laughs> he, he does it much better than I do. So, um, so We actually yeah. do a game called You're Fired. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it is. You, yeah. yeah. Anyway. And, and, and we're... Um, yeah, we're doing uh, our own workshops. We're actually going to be in uh, in London in October, working with uh, uh, this Happy Melly group, uh, the Management 3.0 uh, people that facilitate that program throughout the world, and going to work with uh, those guys. So that's how many were in Paris about a year ago? It's just you two right now. You keep it in family, right in house. Yes. Yeah. 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 Stays in the family. You're not going to like <laughs> train like little wood mini me woods if it gets bigger too. And yeah, I mean our our. our Larger idea to, to, for scaling is to train, uh, <laughs> to get other get, uh, train the facilitators, kind of thing, yeah. train the trainers, and actually get other people interested in, mm -hmm. in becoming facilitators and in implementing our program. Hey, if you send me so, to Paris, I'll go. Yeah. I'll do it. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. you know we'll competent. <laughs> <laughs> Competency. People can actually do, you know, you know relate be, to yeah. people in a positive way. You're being like, like kind of Robert Downey Jr. Like, you like hate your, your guts right well, now. Yeah. Well, he's like a lot of mine, even though this is not what we'll oh, any, Anyway. Anyway. We find Improvagility.com. That's right. Improvagility.com. Can you tell your brother he has to plug himself properly, though? Improvagility.com. <laughs> you tell my brother to go plug himself? What's wrong with you? And if they see you on the street. It's a guest you're, on your show, for Christ's sake. And then people can come talk to you. Your body language is, is telling me you're a little uptight right now. Oh, really? Oh, I... What I'm, are you, a body I'm, in, I'm improving. He's like this. Everything's going <laughs> inward. you're pissing him off. He's oh, like Robert Downey. <laughs> well, I did it with Robert Downey. I, does that look better now? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Improvagility.com. Thank you. In my training, I was taught that when a marriage is seriously broken and there have been years of anger and resentment, sometimes it's better to just get a divorce. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, <clears throat> well, I, um, I definitely uh, felt that I was being nudged in that direction when we were in marriage counseling too. And I think, uh, sadly, uh, it, you're right that a lot of professionals in the mental health industry are not trained properly in my opinion and um i have to say I, I have a lot of anger about that still you know i see this really bad relationship advice everywhere i look and i just want to punch somebody in the nose because um it was it's very painful for me to not know what to do uh, in my marriage well i absolutely love that you have a commitment to make the mental health industry more effective in terms of preserving relationships, preserving marriage. And I think one of the reasons that it is so important for me is because the problems in my marriage, the breakdown in my marriage, um, was really the portal to a journey where I became my best self. So this was the best self-improvement program I ever went on. And I had a lot of mental health problems before I began practicing the intimacy skills. I was uh, diagnosed with depression and I went on um, you know, SSRIs and uh, I had my husband diagnosed with attention deficit disorder and he went on Ritalin. So we were quite the um, pair. But in that, in that scenario, you know, we had a broken down marriage with you know, one guy who had a disorder deficit and, you know, me with my depression and I also had anxiety too. And um, it really was not the marriage that I dreamed of when I stood at the altar and said, I do. In that, in that scenario, we would 
um, laugh together and have inside jokes and he would make bedroom eyes and that's what I really wanted and and I, I felt like these diagnoses might help us get there but uh, that wasn't my experience at all it, it, in fact it really just left us more hopeless than ever and feeling really more broken and sort of pathologized instead of um, the, the model that I see that's certainly been effective for us is I just wasn't trained you know my parents are divorced and I was following a failed recipe by just doing what was modeled for me. So a lot of us didn't have relationships 101 in school. I had a little self-study program myself where uh, I, my textbooks were Cosmo and Glamour magazine uh, and those just sure didn't work either. So where are we supposed to learn this stuff? It's kind of frustrating that it's not more widely available and that's part of why I'm so passionate about making sure that every woman has access to the information, to the six intimacy skills that can transform her relationship. So what, what would you say is the one question you should never ask a man? If you don't want to have an argument, what's the best way to avoid it to begin with? Well, um, one of the things that I thought was going to be really effective for creating intimacy in my marriage was asking my husband how he felt. And I kind of, I learned that in therapy, right? Everything in therapy is, how do you feel? Well, that's actually kind of a feminine cultural question. But asking a man how he feels is about like asking a woman who's wearing a bathing suit and eating a pizza, pizza, a pizza, a piece of pizza, how much she weighs. Like, you know that. <laughs> it's the same culturally to ask a man how he feels. They don't want to talk about it. We women are the ones with the emotional brilliance. So it's actually much more effective and powerful for us to check with ourselves and say, oh, how do I feel? And then express that. And men are super attracted to that about us. They especially love that we um, know how we feel and what we want. And that can really create a lot of intimacy. In fact, without our vulnerability in that regard, intimacy is impossible. That's a key ingredient for it. And um, it, we're never going to get it by asking him. You know, I, I see a lot of women saying, you know, which way they'll ask their husbands or their boyfriends, where is this relationship going? And I always like, I always want to say like, ask yourself, because you're the one that has all the power. And just like Spider-Man, Right, with great power comes great responsibility. So I think we have a responsibility to learn these intimacy skills so that we can create strong relationships and strong families that lead to strong communities and a stronger country and a, and a better world. So just the wife has to learn the intimacy skills. <laughs> Does the husband not have to learn anything? <laughs> well, what I've seen is that um, we actually, we really do have more power in relationships. And one of the statistics that blew my mind when I first started lear learning about the intimacy skills is that um, women initiate more divorce. And amongst college educated women, it's as high as 90%. So you think about any kind of negotiation, like even if you're on a car lot, right, the person who walks away has the most power. So even if that statistic kind of supports the idea that we're more likely to be the ones to um, call it quits in a relationship. And so therefore, that is one aspect of how we have more power. Another way that women um, are more powerful in relationships is that we are the sexier sex. And men tend to need sex more than women do. And so we're the gatekeepers of sex. So um, one of the things I've done is ask thousands of men, I'll say, how important is it to you that your wife is happy? And they all say the same thing. They say, oh, it's everything. It's the most important thing. A guy in England said, it's imperative. <laughs> and so they're running around trying to make us happy. They just have a natural drive to do that. Um, I mean, part of it might be they're trying to keep their one and only sex partner happy. I think that certainly comes into it. But it seems to be bigger than that because I just know for me, when I express a desire to my husband and I do it, what, what I call purely, no criticism or control uh, in there, but just really am focused on the final outcome of what I want. The guy will trip over himself. He can't get it done fast enough. You just call it back again. We're doing the improv segment, which I like a lot. And uh, well, the ratings to, are going sky high. Sky high. We're, 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 we're like, I like that, that we tension, creative tension and everything. Anyway, we only have 10 minutes. We're going to do in the improv segment. Jody's taking the lead. Really? Yes. Oh, I thought you were. You're the scrum master. 
No, he's the scrum master. There's okay. Scrum. You're, you're the scrum master. Okay, not right, only do you teach improv, again. you do it yourself. Not only am I, you know, you're a customer too. Okay, whatever. That's right. Okay. <laughs> the hair for man, man's hair for... With, the hair piece guy, yeah. whatever. Okay. I think, is, is he alive? No. No, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> we're going to do a little improvisation. So you're laughing. Stuff, and here's you're laughing. how we kind of... Maybe teach it a little bit so you get the idea of it. Uh, but this isn't a lesson show; it's an entertainment show. <laughs> and and Lauren Lauren goes, I don't know if I want to do something else because I don't know what people want to watch it. So he wasn't into it, but we, we forgive him. <laughs> oh we'll, we'll see. We'll throw, <laughs> throw the man right under the bus. We have nine minutes. <laughs> Controversy. Yeah, the nine Controversy. minutes is like my wedding night. For okay. Christ's sake. <laughs> Jesus Christ! What did you say? You, um, Alexander Graham Bell and his wife. You make your wife, wife. What do you mean my three minutes are up? But anyway, what? No, you said your wife always screams when she has an orgasm because you always walk in when she's making love to someone right, else. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, fine. Go. Oh, go. Can Sorry. you believe he just said right, that? Right. Right. Sort of thing, huh? See how this is going? Yeah, this okay. is rough. Is that improv? Yeah, that's okay. improv. <laughs> okay, we have eight. What do we have? Eight and a half minutes. Yes. So in eight and a half minutes, I'm going to kick his ass. <laughs> anyway, um, that, well, might bring, one, that might bring a lot more hits. Lauren was the one arguing with you. No, so, he wasn't. Okay, fine. Off camera? Yeah. Off camera, okay. Jesus Christ. Laura's a professional. Okay, yeah. my filter's not on. All right. Can we just do this? Yes. This is improv. We don't even get to these fucking games. Let's just stand here and do this. <laughs> this is improv. Remember the conversation we had a couple of shows ago? That was awesome. Yes, that's, that, that's, and, that's what I was going and, you for. You know, yeah. just the politics. Oh, get your, hockey. Hockey. get your hockey. Get your hockey. Get your hip back in place and leave me alone. Okay, what's wrong with your hip? Well, the audience doesn't know that, so yeah, my back was out. So people need to get your hip back in place. No one else we're talking about. He got his hip popped before he, before the show. He got plugged. back adjustment. He got plugged. Back he adjustment. said he got popped before the show. I thought, yeah, I don't yeah, know. two pops. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, anyway, what are we doing? In years, I'm married now. I'm like Santa Claus. <laughs> I come once a year. But anyway, um, Doing. No. Um, let's do this, shall we? Improvisation. Now it's Discovery Channel. Improvisation is, uh, well, it's just, a, it's a great skill. It's fun, it's funny, and it's also a great skill for actors to learn and, it's, and it's for schmucks to try. Um, but the, fi the base, the foundation of improvisation is the yes and mindset. And that is not just in improv, but really in life. That's why we do this in our workshops. And you've been there, you've been in my workshops, you know the whole yes and mindset. So we start out with an exercise called Yes And. But and Yes And, we only have seven practice, more minutes. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, and I swear, I can't wait for them to <laughs> get here so I can beat the living <laughs> shit out of you. We'll anyway. do time check every 30 seconds. Yes, oh. <laughs> That's what it, oh. I'm getting anal, I'm sorry. I, you yeah, said I to bet be, you are. You said to be more precise. <laughs> I'm getting <laughs> anal. Why don't you go point yourself? said that. <laughs> I would be pitching, you know that. Oh. No catching. <laughs> Okay, so he I sure throws a mean curveball. Oh, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you anyway. know what? Good, good. We're not going to get to these exercises now. This is what we well, I wanted to do the one that you were talking about with the, you know, not getting that far. Whatever. Two line vocabulary. Yeah, but he, but he wasn't into it. He's not into a lot of things that you're into. <laughs> okay, let's <laughs> okay, do yes, sir. Especially that one part. <laughs> okay, yes, sir. <laughs> this is a man you're talking to right here. Yes, and is the basis of improvisation, okay? And it's basically, we're going to do a little bit of, around it. We're going to start with a statement, and I'll yes, and it. And what it means is, yes, I'm listening, and I'm going to build on your idea. That's all it is. This way, in improvisation, you're not denying anybody's idea. You're not putting anybody's idea down. You, you feel comfortable as an actor or as a person to come up with ideas and not be shut down. Like you were talking about, as a scrum master with your agility in the new workforce. So many times you said Scrum Master tonight. I like the <laughs> sound. Like what does that, that word even mean? Scrum. What does Scrum Master it's, mean? It, it's the latest. What do you care? You don't even want to do the two-headed yeah, other thing. What does he care? So you give a shit. Yeah, you <laughs> give a shit. No, don't. Okay. He's a tough guy. He'll so keep both I go, <laughs> yes, and we only have six more minutes oh, so to go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I was improv oh, Okay, so give me a statement, anything. Say um, something. It got very, very humid today. Yes, and my air conditioning went out. Wouldn't you know it? Yes, and. Oh, it was Whatever. very tremendous. And then yes, and. Running the lane. Yeah, but still actor, yes, and. Yes, yes and. and. Build on my Yes, idea. then I went out in, to the movies. That has nothing to do with what I just said. Though. I know. Improv. I... <laughs> <laughs> yes, and. The movie movies. theaters are often very cool, very air conditioned. Y yes, and I have to wear a sweater sometimes in the movie theater because I get so cold by the end of the movie. Yes, and when you wear sweaters, you can see your nipples because they get hard in the, in, the, in the movie theater. And you can add to that. Yes, then we all... And. Yes, and. Yes, and. Then we all went out for ice cream. Okay. After yes, and. Ice cream helps when you're hot, and 
Especially when you leave the air conditioning and you're out in the warm air. Yes, and when I'm hot, I get even hotter when I see Lauren. Yes, and I think Adam has a man crush on you. Yes, and Adam, can you tell us how much time we have left? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to screw with Lauren for four minutes. Yes, and time is very fleeting. Okay. So should we go on to the next thing? All right, so that's basically it. It's like the most fucked up version of yes and you'll never see. But anyway, um, we're going to do a one -word game, game called One Word Story, which I will participate in. Uh, we're going to build a sentence one word at a time. So this be, you can't have any agenda. You can't plan anything. It just has to be what it is in that moment. Okay? One sentence at a so time. So the improv is about working moment to moment, basically, and acting. So go ahead. So a set, one one word. One word. The man went to the store. Bathroom. And he proceeded to leave something nasty in the bathroom. Someone took my pecker and shoved it. <laughs> That's one word now. Just the hyphenated. Shoved, 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 shoved it around the toilet. The yeah. So this is like the amateur version of this game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm used to working with the professionals, but I'm not going to be a dick and say anything. Lauren threw us off with the argument. I'm sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's that? You're still mad about that? I am. Do the time check really quick. Three minutes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Based on that horseshit, we're going to do a game called Three-Headed Expert. I'm going to facilitate. You guys are three. Let me. Can we, we can't move. No, okay. we can't move. You three guys mm -hmm. are one person with three heads, okay? And you're going to be an expert in something. Let's say you're an expert in space travel, all right? I'm going to ask you some questions, and you answer them one word at a time. Not trying to be funny, not trying to, you know, screw up, screw up anybody's idea. Anybody's idea, we're just going to do it. All right, so you would start, my name is Harry okay. Houdini, whatever it is. Okay. If, if you said the last word, the next question, you would start with okay. the answer, okay? So let's say you're an expert in space travel. Thank you for so much for coming in tonight. What is your name? My. Very. Name. Is. Super. Man. Superman? Yes. That's really your name? Yes. It. Is. My. Wow. My. Very. Special. Name. Special. Um, so tell me, uh, have you traveled yourself in space? I. Did travel to Mars. Really? When? Many centuries ago. How old are you? I am 285 years old. So how old were you when you went to Mars? I do Remember that time when I visited Pluto. Huh. Have you ever uh, visited Uranus? I visited Uranus. I know you did. Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Several times before. And what was that like? <laughs> what was that like? I'm so it very gross. What's what's gross about it? Why would they name a planet? Is it actually Uranus? Yes. It time check. Yes, it time it. check. We only have fifteen seconds. That was very interesting oh. improv. That's just the, where are we over here? Yeah. Oh, that's I, just kind of an idea. Yeah, jo Jody has to learn to knock it. Sometimes, you know, I, I know you want, you want to be egalitarian, but I think you should have punched him. No way. And smacked me. No, I'd smack you, but I would never. Uh, uh, Lauren would kick my ass in three seconds. I want to yeah. do, the, do the, the thing about with the two words, on my agenda thing. What's it called again? Two line vocabulary. Yeah, I want to do that next time, though. We will. Okay. Well, this has been a very exciting briefing with Baron. We'll be back again with Jody Ward, he, Lauren the Prince. He never gets his last name right. You notice that? Uh, yeah. Breezing he with Bing. Know, he doesn't know his own last name. This is Breezing with Bing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, come Sorry. back next week to see the next Breezing with Bing. <laughs> <laughs>
Welcome back to What's Trending with Raya, only here on Breezing with Beerman. And yes, I am back to bring you new cool stuff, especially for the summer season. So let's get started. Guys, if you are looking for a perfect casual pair of shorts, I got you covered for this summer. BBO shorts are highly quality board shorts that feature a hidden bottle opener. So it has a hidden bottle opener in the pocket. They were inve invented by a surfer that, you know, he was with his buddies in the beach and they have beverages, but there's no can opener or bottle opener. So what happened is they got like, you know, bloody thumb and chipped tooth because of that. So what they did is to have and discover this BBO shorts. So they come in a bunch of different colors, including solid gray. So no matter what is your style, you'll find a pair that you will love. I discovered Super Goop's SPF 50 Moose Sunscreen by accident, but now they're definitely my favorite brand. It goes on light and smooth, and it, it's not greasy at all when you rub it in. So you can grab a smaller 3.4 ounce bottle that you can carry around. That's what I use. And then they have also a larger 7.1 ounce bottle that you can carry on your big vacations or summer getaways. So you know you have to wear your SPF every day. So Make it easy for yourself. My favorite part is they are cruelty free. They don't test on animals. So make sure you check out Super Goop's SPF 50 Moose Sunscreen. So are you ready to be wet and humid this summer? You will be thanks to my pal Alexa. She introduced me to this incredible handheld instant. It is a fan. It has a three speeds, two misting modes and a 20 milliliter you know, water tank to keep you cool all the time. It comes in a blue or pink color and is very available in Amazon Prime so you can get yours at any time for your summer getaway plans. This is one of my favorite items for this month. Remember when you were a kid and you turn your couch, your table, or your chairs into fort and then you put a bunch of pillows and blankets? It was the coziest place on earth, right? Now you can have that again. Privacy Pop it's a tent where the base fits under the mattress and the tent fits on top of your bed. It's a great solution for people, you know, if you need privacy or darkness or a solution for your sleep, you can grab this privacy tent. They even make a desk version so you can nap at work if you're allowed to, if you can get away with it. Plus, if you sign up for their emailing list, you can get a 20% discount on your first purchase. So we talked about that SPF. Oh, lotion and sunscreen earlier, right? And you know by now that you're supposed to wear your SPF every day. Even if you're loving having that tan, you know, I'm having that right now, your skin still needs protection. So, but most of us, especially women, you know, you don't wor worry about your face because most of the makeup, they already have those SPFs. But how about your body? So that's why I'm so excited that I discover Mott 50. So it's a line of clothing, athletic wear, and swimwear that they have a UPF rating of 50. What does UPF mean? This means that only one over 50 UVA or UVB can reach your skin through this clothing. So they're stylish. They have an entire chambray lane, uh, chambray line, and I'm completely in love with the Chloe bodysuit. Right now, use the code trending at checkout for you to receive 20% discount off. So that's been our five featured items for the summer edition of our What's Trending with Raya. I'll see you next month. Baba booey to all.